I'm going to trim this piece out. I'm also going to trim this piece out, which I should have done before. Close that. I'm going to do a save before I do anything else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to join all these outer vectors together, which then allows me to put some fillets in. So I'm going to start selecting these. I press the shift key as I go around. That's those selected, and now I'm going to join the open vectors using the join open vectors command. Join, and there we have that little lot, as you can see, as one vector. Now there's a fillet uh, creation tool here. I'm going to click on that. Uh, now you've got to now think about the radius of the tool that you're going to be using. I've got this set at seven millimeters uh, and I just want a normal fillet and when you're in the position where you can do a fillet it will show a little tick. There's a tick and there's a tick. When I try and use it here it doesn't like it. So I'm going to do a little cheat here. I'm going to go to the line command. I'm going to draw a line from there and I want it to be at an angle of zero, like so. I'm now going to trim this part away here. I'm going to trim that part of the circle away. I'm going to trim this part of the line away. Uh, I'm now going to go out again and I'm now going to join the open vectors. So i am highlighted that outer one and I'm going to highlight this here and I'm now going to go to the join open vectors, join, close, that's done. I've gone to the circle command, I'm going to put a circle centered on that intersection there and I want its radius to be seven millimeters. I'm now going to do the same again, one there and one there. And I'm now going to have one at this intersection here. So if I just now remove those that I don't need, I don't need this one, don't need that one, don't need that one. I've got this one here. I'm going to use my scissors command here to get rid of that bit, that bit. And now I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to join open vectors, join, and now that is now all one entity and I've got that fillet in there. Well that's done the tricky bit, now we're going to go on to the uh, slides that go either side of the uh, router uh, and are actually part of the mechanism that allows you to adjust uh, the boot up and down. Now again one would have the option of just taking uh, part of the uh, drawing file and then importing it into vCarve Pro. Uh, but that's not the point of this video. Uh, I want to show you how to create this with vCarve Pro alone. So I'm going to open up uh, vCarve Pro and I'm going to create a new file. And this time my material is a long strip from which I'm going to cut both of the sliders. Now my piece of material is 420 millimeters long and it is 70 millimeters high and its thickness is 11 millimeters. Now uh, do check with your X-carve that that 11 millimeters suits your uh, setup. It's very marginal in mine and it is just okay. So do check that. I'm in millimeters, my uh, XY datum position is bottom left hand corner and so I'm going to say okay to that. And there's my long strip. Now I'm going to create one slider and then I'm going to create a mirror image of it uh, which will be the one which goes on the other side. I'm going to start by creating a rectangle that covers the whole of the outside of one of the sliders and that rectangle should be 160 by 44. So I'm going to the rectangle command just here 
And uh, the last time I used this command was when I was actually making the sliders and it's already defaulted. They're 160 uh, wide and 44 high and I've got them set a position of uh, 10 in from each of the bottom sides. So let's say create uh, and th there's my first rectangular outline. Well, that was easy. I can close that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is create the slot uh, which is uh, the sliding part of the mechanism. A screw passes through there and it allows the slides to go up and down. Now that slot is 10 millimeters in from the edge and that will be the bottom edge of the slide itself. Uh, and it's 61 millimeters long. However, the 61 millimeters includes the, the half round bits at each end. And this line I'm going to create is going to be the line that a six millimeter cutter will follow. And so uh, my actual line needs to be six millimeters less than 61. So it's 55 millimeters long. So it's 10 in from the bottom to the center, 55 millimeters long. Now my uh, line therefore starts at 13 in from the left hand edge plus 10 for the margin. Uh, so that's 23. And uh, it starts at 10 in from the bottom here, uh, which is 20 there. So I'll add that. And then we're going to do the next one, which will be at an angle of zero, and the length will be 55. And so that's that added. So there's my line, which represents uh, the center line for the slot. I'll escape out of that. I'm now going to do the vertical graduations, and these will be done with a, a, a very narrow uh, V uh, cutter, uh, and that will just score the wood uh, so that one's got some reference marks. Uh, when one's setting the sliders. Uh, and these are going to be a series of lines. I've just got to create one. Uh, and my first one is going to be uh, three millimeters in from the end of the line. So that X position is going to be 26. And it needs to be uh, no more than about uh, eight millimeters up from the center of the line. Uh, so uh, that makes that Y position at 28. And I'll add that and then it's going to go uh, downwards and so my angle is going to be minus 90. And my length is going to be 16. And that's added. So there I have uh, a line, I'll escape out of that, and I want these repeated at 5 millimeter intervals. So one can do that very simply. I've selected that line. I'm now going to go down here to the array command uh, and it allows me to produce a linear array of objects. So I'll click on that and it's asking me how many I want. Uh, now it's identified what the object is. It's a line, it's 16 millimeters long. Uh, number of rows, I only want one row. Uh, and how many columns? Uh, in this instance, I want 11 columns. And what is the offset? In the x direction, I want them at five millimeter intervals and zero interval in the y direction because they're just going to go straight along. And then I've got the option of grouping the copies, which will make it simpler when it comes to doing the toolpath for this particular item. So copy, and there I have all my items there. So that's that little task done, very simply. So I'm now going to do my first save. That's demo slide. Save. I'm now going to do the two cutouts. There's a small one here and a larger one here. Uh, and this one is 10 in from the top and it is 45 long. So I'm going to select that. My top position would be at 54. Uh, so uh, that will be 44 for the Y. And it's at 10 for the X because that's right on the edge. I'm going to add that point. You can see it's added it there. Now I want it to be 45 long at an angle of zero. So zero angle and 45. I've added that. And then I want to go up here so it's uh, at right angles to that uh, line. I've just clicked on it and that's that little bit done. So there's that corner cutout done. And for the larger cutout, uh, it's uh, quite simple. It's 30 from the end, and the end is at uh, 170. So 
uh, take 30 away, that makes 140. And it's right on this uh, line here, so it's at the 54 mark for, for y, it's on that line, so that's 54. So I've added that. Now we're going to go down, so that's minus 90 degrees, and its length is 26. I've added that. Now I'm going to go from there to the end, and I'm going to use the uh, feature built in, which is detecting that line and allowing me to put a right angle to it. So that's that done. Now I'm going to take the scissor command, and I'm going to get rid of the excess here and the excess there. The next thing I want to do is to join these vectors, so I'm clicking on them with the shift key pressed. So that's all the vectors around the outside, and I'm going to join them. There they are joined, and you can see now if I click on that, they all come up highlighted. And the next thing I'd like to do is to put some uh, little uh, fillets in, and I'm going to put ordinary fillets, and they're going to be seven millimeters in uh, radius there. And I'm going to pop them at this corner. There's the tick at this corner. I also want them in this corner here. I want them in this corner here, that corner there. But one can't have it at the bottom here because uh, this will be where the magnets fit. So uh, that's uh, left alone. So that's it, that's our design. So I can close that. I'm now gonna do another save. And now what I want to do is create a mirror image of this. So if I select it all, and there is a mirror command here. Now I want to flip it about a vertical line which vector it call flip horizontal. So I'm gonna click on flip horizontal, and there is our new version. And that is a mirror image of that, which is exactly what we need uh, for our work. So I'll close that. I'm now just going to move this object over. And I want it over uh, by about 60 millimeters. That's fine. I can close that. And there's my finished uh, bit of work. And now I'll just do a final save. And I could now do my tool paths. Now the tool paths are quite simple. One for the outside using, I would use a quarter inch uh, spiral cutter. Uh, this uh, center line here, uh, that's going to be uh, done with a six millimeter cutter. And these graduations are gonna be done uh, with a V-nose cutter, very shallow. Well, that's it. We've done the tricky bits for making the ultimate dust boot to go with the X-Carve and its DeWalt router. And I think you'll find that uh, using a V-Carve Pro is actually going to get easier and easier the more you use it. It certainly is going that way for me. Now, I will be producing from time to time uh, either X-Carve Extras uh, or V-Carve Pro Extra videos. Uh, just as odd items come up, I'll put them into the Extras videos for those two subjects. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.